Pool hole is finished. The whole thing is 22 feet, 15 feet, six foot deep end, three foot shallow end. Another insulated concrete pool going down. Y'all know what it is. How we make sure everything lines up from the deep end to the shallow end. You almost got pegged in the ass. <laughs> Quick access. <laughs> Just to give it that extra stability. Behind me, all of the A-frames are finally secured on the ground. Good morning YouTube, it is Monday morning and we're back on site. I'm looking at the progress here, so let's do our morning progress tour. We always gotta start with this. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, this is what we've got going on. The pool is fully braced. We got our bracing up everywhere. Um, the pool floor is done, the pool walls are done, everything is scabbed. What we're going to be doing today is we are going to be putting our collar extension all the way around the pool. It's just a collar that gets built up so that way we can control exactly how nice the top of the concrete is. That way we can put our coping nice and smooth. We will be working on this retaining wall today as well over here. We'll be getting some plumbing done, some of the skimmer, the main drains, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much progress update this morning. Um, today's going to be a bit of a slower day, just two of us on site today, but we'll keep plugging away, getting things done and showing you guys the progress as we go along. So y'all stay tuned. <music> all right, YouTube, a little bit of a morning update just to kind of show you guys the progress. We'll call these progress updates. We are throwing down some of this plywood around, like I said, the pool walls. And the reason being is it gives us complete control over how smooth everything is. That way when we pour our concrete and then we come up and we hand trowel this, it's all nice, perfectly smooth. That way when we put our automated pool cover on it, there's no issues with it there. And then when we go to put our coping on top of that, again, no issues with the coping. So that's a little bit of a progress update. Y'all stay tuned. Midday update for you guys. I'm just plumbing the pool right now. We're putting in our return fittings. And let me show you how we do our returns. Now, because this is an insulated concrete pool, that means that concrete is going to get poured in the actual wall. Again, the wall is right there. Concrete goes all the way down there and we need to make holes so that we can put our returns in there. So the way I like to do it is I start my hole with a three inch hole saw. That way I can go through and then I take a piece of three inch PVC. I just make some teeth on it. I put it in there, I spin it and then I hammer it in all the way through until we get past and that creates that little slit back there. Now, to poke that out, I just take my hammer and I go poof, and it pokes out. And we take this three inch PVC sleeve and we just stick her right in. Stick it right in flush. Now, what this does is it creates a three inch cavity for us to then put our plumbing in after. The reason I like to do that, and I don't just stick my return fitting through the wall and encapsulate that in concrete, is it's not really serviceable on the worst case that for whatever reason in the future it ever needs to be serviced or looked at. Um, when we do this three inch sleeve, the concrete goes all the way around and then it gives us a full three inches to work with all the way through. And then that way, like I said, it's better to build something that's serviceable than to build something that's never serviceable. Obviously, we pressure test everything. We build things for quality. We build things to last. But that's not to say that we shouldn't go the extra step and build something uh, a little bit smarter, you know, use our heads when we're building something. So what I'm just going to be doing right now is I'm just going to go around, take my three inch PVC again, stick it through the tube. Voila. And this last one as well, take it. We stick her in the tube. 
and push it in a little and voila that is how we do our return fittings little tip of the trade just thought i'd show you guys how we like to do our returns here like I said, we don't just put the whole return and all the plumbing directly in. We do a three inch sleeve. That way we can put our plumbing in. And if it ever needs to be serviced for whatever reason, you can easily service it without having to cut out the concrete or jackhammer or bring any sort of um, drills or anything like that. It's all built smart, built with intent and built to last. That's how we do it at Visionary Baby. All right, YouTube, here's another update. I'm here with man Devo. Check him. That beautiful, luscious afro, unlike anything you've seen before. <laughs> All jokes aside though, we're getting this retaining wall done. Let me show you what we got here. So this retaining wall, like I've mentioned a few times, it is to, where's my finger, there it is. It is to kind of start keeping everything level because the backyard has a slope, so we need to adjust and correct that. Um, and then there is also going to be a retaining wall that we're building like a little seat wall on top of this concrete structural retaining wall that we're building so technically we're building two walls one is structural and one is just pretty and finish but because this is such a large and long wall we like to over engineer things so if you can see here this is our first footing mark we have footings every six feet on center and the reason we do footings is because out here in Canada we have something called a frost line. Now frost line pretty much means that water freezes anywhere above the frost line and if you didn't know when water freezes it expands it's the only thing that expands and doesn't contract which means that things lift and heave and because we're building stuff on top of it we do not want any heaving so to over engineer it and build it to last we go past the frost line which is four feet in our part of Ontario so we're using the auger we got the auger right there it's a little bright, so you probably won't see that, my apologies, but you'll see it in action. That's the post hole digger that puts a hole down past the four foot frost line. That way, when we pour our concrete in there, we have a stable footing that reaches past the frost line and it's built to last. So that's what we're doing now. We're just marking out our six feet on center. That way we can come in and start drilling. At the drop of a rat, Give her, 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 give her! Not the next. <laughs> she don't want to come out. She doesn't want to come out. It's my dream. Cats are little mountain tops, rivers and streams. Looking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give her till you lay the ball. Forward your bed. Give her. Alright, YouTube, YouTube Nation, let's take a peek at what we got here. Christmas came early for these clients. These are some beautiful pool lights for the pool because nowadays it's almost impossible to install a pool without pool lights because they just look so darn fresh. These are the PAL Even Glow. If you can see on the back, multicolored, controllable via remote, controllable also via Wi Fi. It really is a magnificent, magnificent product. Uh, these ones are extremely powerful. They're quite large. They light up the whole pool. And what's really nice about this model specifically, um, it's kind of in the name. It says Even Glow. Traditional pool lights, we'll snap some pictures in here so you guys can take a peek. Traditional pool lights, you can see the angle of refraction. If you look top down, you can see the beams of where the lights shine. The Even Glow is designed to get rid of that. It's a nice even glow, hence the name. Uh, there's no harsh lighting in the pool. It lights up everything nice and evenly. Again, hence the name Even Glow. It's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing now. We are installing the pool lights now because this is a vinyl liner pool we're not actually installing the light portion yet we're going to put this aside and all we're installing today is something called this niche now a niche is basically a 
cavity that takes the pool light in. So this is pretty much it. It's a cavity, that way we put it in the wall and then in the future we can put the lights in, screw it all and make sure it's all secured. But before we pour our concrete in the walls, we're just going to be installing this niche so y'all can take a peek at how we do it. So when it comes to installing pool lights, the first and one of the foremost things you want to take into account is the placement of them. Now, because people are going to be hanging out over here and over there, but no one's going to be hanging out on the other side of the wall, just because, or so the other side of the pool, because that is getting a spillway wall. Uh, we're going to place the lights here. That way when they shine, they're shining away from your eyes when you're kind of just relaxing. You don't want to be here at, you know, dawn when it's getting a little bit dark. The pool lights are on and they're kind of just glaring in your eye and you're kind of trying to avoid them. So we always place them on the wall where it's going to be aiming away from communal hangout areas. And that is this wall. Now what I'm doing now is I'm coming and I'm taking a measurement of this wall. So this wall is exactly 22 feet because we build exactly precise pools because, you know, we do awesome work. Now, it is 22 feet. We have two lights. And the way I'm going to center my lights out evenly is using this formula. And I'll kind of give you a representation with my hands. So whatever the length is, because I said this is 22 feet, we're gonna take that number and divide it by three. And I'll show you with my hand. When we have three points, one, two, three, that gives us two equal center points on the bottom here. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking this measurement, we're dividing it by three. That way when we go one, two, and three, we're left with two nice lines evenly spaced out on this wall. And you know, it doesn't look wonky, doesn't look out of shape. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to our site. Let's do our, again, traditional morning walkthrough. Not much different than yesterday's, but still. Oh, look at that, look at that. The main focus and what got done yesterday are these footings. Um, we got that plywood wrapped around for our concrete collar. Now, this right here is, like I said, a concrete retaining wall. We are using this to correct the grade change that the backyard naturally has that way when we put our pavers everything is nice and level uh, so this retaining wall is going to hold in all of our backfill and then we are going to be building a seating retaining wall on top of it so in order to make sure that this is over engineered and built to last we have footings oh you probably can't see that it's nice and dark anyways that goes really really deep that's about four feet deep we got another footing 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 and we got another footing um, most contractors wouldn't go above and beyond to do this um, i've worked with a few of them they just throw concrete retaining walls in place i don't like it because again if any movement happens which by the way will happen especially when we have our freeze thaw in Canada, um, then you're risking everything moving and everything settling and having to come back and do warranty repairs. So you might as well just go the extra mile, get an auger out, drill those holes past the frost line, make sure that it's all done well and built to last. Um, we are going to be putting rebar up from each one and then running horizontal rebar just to tie every footing together and make that whole wall sound. Uh, so that's what got done yesterday again as well as this plywood let me get a better angle just so you guys can kind of understand why we do it uh, this plywood over here helps us keep a nice straight and smooth finish we come with our trowels and we just get a very very perfect smooth finish all the way across that way when we put our coping there's no wobble no teeter points 
so that got done. We have our plumbing. Those are our lights. Lights. We have more plumbing fittings in there. Uh, but yeah, that's what got done yesterday. Like I said, that concrete collar, the retaining wall footings. Today we will be finishing up some minor stuff in the pool. We will also be finishing framing that wall. And then we will be pouring concrete in the walls. Um, so that's going to be fun. It's always exciting to watch a pump go over a house into the walls. Mm -hmm. Lion. Lion, I like that. A little bigger go home. Fucking lion burgers. Into the build empty handed. Mm. I can still taste the carrot. Right, YouTube I'm about to show you how we do our steps I don't know why those guys are laughing over there they're uh, they're doing some uh, some plywood leveling but nonetheless these are how we like to build our steps so the first step you can see we have some chalk lines over there the first step is just over two feet and then each step after that is 14 inches so we square them off on the corner we don't really like to run the steps the full length of the pool just because it eats up so much usable space by the time your steps come out you're somewhere around here leaving you with far too little usable space in the shallow end so we throw them in on a 45 in the corner tucked away that way you still have all that usable space it's just a little bit of forethought um, but yeah so we take our measurement out we go six and a half feet take our measurement out six and a half feet snap a chalk line there and then we move 14 inches forward and then 14 inches forward snap a chalk line and then the same all the way there until we have our steps laid out we then take our two by tens which we cut on a 45 over there as you can see and we put it across now we make sure it's perfectly level and if you see that let's get a nice little shot for you guys Ooh, it's perfectly level absolutely perfectly level because that's how we build here at Visionary. But nonetheless, that is our first step. I'll continue framing up and I'll show you the finished step progress. So y'all stay tuned for that. <laughs> I have just finished framing out our steps. It's a hot one today. It's going to be 37. So we are all nice and sweaty. But let's stop talking about our sweat. Let's start talking about this job. If you see here, these are our three steps. Like I've said before, we put them on a 45. That way you have much more usable space over on this area. And everything is framed out nice and level. Let's see, we'll take a level. Come check it. Bang. Perfect. Come check this one out. And bang. Perfect. And then if we come and check the last one out. Bang. Perfect. So all the steps are perfectly level. Everything is nice and squared off. So everything is perfectly squared. And yeah, that's how we pour our steps. We still need to put some reinforcement, which is just some of the rebar sticking into the pool wall, as well as up and down just to tie all the steps together. 
uh, but that's pretty much it framed. So now that the steps are done, framed, and ready for some concrete, what I'm about to be doing next is tackling this structural retaining wall. So to show you again, we have this retaining wall here, goes all the way across. The backside is framed as you can see, still needs some pieces just to hold the concrete from spilling out. And then I, start, I need to start framing the front side of it. So that's what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to finish framing the back side, then work on the front side, make sure everything's nice, secured, full of rebar, strong, built to last, built with quality. Let me turn down this music real quick. What up, YouTube? A little bit of a 3 p.m. update for you guys. We're just drinking a little bit of Perrier Energize. Perrier. Y'all need to sponsor us. I'll keep plugging your product forever. It is fantastic. There's like five ingredients on here. Not a whole lot of sugar, which I like. Um, got that nice Perrier sparkling water taste. It's not overpowering. And yeah, honestly, it really does energize you. But nonetheless, let me show you what we got going on. So we are just waiting around for concrete now. We're doing some minor touches. Let me walk you through our retaining wall. So we have a retaining wall that continues all the way down. We have our post holes, the rebar sticks up. That's gonna get centered when there's actually concrete in the hole. Um, so the rebar pokes up and then again, when there's some more concrete, we're going to take a horizontal piece of rebar and stick it this way as well as that way. We also have here something called fast foot. Now, this fast foot product is a product that is designed to quickly set up footings. When the concrete gets poured in this wall, it's going to fill up and then this is going to push out. This is gonna push out and yeah, it'll hold it beyond belief. A lot of people think that it won't hold it. It actually does hold it, it's amazing. And this is actually beneficial for us for another reason. If anyone knows anything about concrete, concrete is porous, meaning it has small little holes in it that absorb. And when water makes its way into that concrete, and it freezes, it'll expand internally, causing stress points, hairline cracks, and micro fractures. So this fast foot system not only speeds up our process of getting our footings design or footings built, but it actually prevents the water from sitting underneath that concrete as well, which means more longevity, no water in it, trying to prevent cracks. Again, there's two types of concrete cracked and gonna crack. That's why we use reinforcement, rebar, and things like that. But we like to go the extra mile. Just every little step counts um, in terms of making sure that you're building something quality and to last. So that's that retaining wall. We have our pump up in the air. He's over the house. We're gonna get some sweet drone shots of that. And we're just waiting on concrete right now. So when the concrete's here, you guys will see us pouring these walls. So y'all stay tuned. This is what I look like in the morning, boys. <laughs> there you go, Roni. So what he's doing here is using this eight foot vibrator. The reason he's doing that is just to consolidate all of the concrete, make sure there's no gaps, no air. Good. This is like those NBA, like, Watching the footage, it's gonna be like the NBA shit where they mic the players up and they fall like, ah, oh, Fuck, that's a good one, you 
so we gotta go that way. Y'all stay tuned for this one. It's going to be a banger. When we're doing it, I'll show you a trick. Yep. When we're doing it, I keep mine as like this. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grabs it out. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what yeah. we're looking for. And then after you're done that, then you can come back and- Moving it out. Oh, yeah. I see, okay. Yeah, but until then, like this, push hard down yeah. and get it. If you need, like if it's too high here, um, it looks like we're gonna have yeah, a lot of anyways. Yeah, just scoop it, throw it in there. Throw whatever. it in there, but yeah, okay. up like almost at a complete 90, okay. and make sure it's really fucking smooth. This has to be bang on. Yeah, we don't want like holes. No, no humps because this is where the automated pool cover goes. So okay. everything needs to be 100 for them. Good morning YouTube, back on site, it's Thursday. We did not do an update yesterday, my apologies on that. Um, this pool is getting a pool automated cover, meaning it's got tracks, housing, motors, and everything, you just push a button and it closes. And they were supposed to come install that yesterday. Um, I went back and forth with the installers many, many weeks in advance. Actually, this was planned, we're currently in June. This was planned in about February, so it's been a few months that we've been going back and forth and everything was ready for the installers only for them to come show up and say, hey, it's not backfilled to where we need it. So I checked the emails, I checked all the communications, lo and behold, no one told me it needs to be backfilled. So we're back on site today. We got to plumb this, backfill it, make sure that it's absolutely ready for them. They are coming tomorrow to install their hardware. That way they can install the automated pool cover. But nonetheless, that's a little bit of what happened yesterday. Today we are on site. As you can see, all the wood is taken off. I'm sitting on our beautiful insulated concrete pools, fully customizable. Again, this is a 15 by 22 foot pool. Steps are out in the corner, so that way you can get as much usable space of the shallow end. And yeah, so today we will be, like I said, plumbing, backfilling a little bit, just kind of prepping for these guys to come in and install their automated pool cover. And yeah, hopefully they come tomorrow. Hopefully they actually get it done because progress needs to continue. I don't like just sitting around. I don't know why it just gets me anxious just sitting around doing nothing. Um, I'm not that person that could just sit there and scroll on social media for a couple of days waiting for other people to do stuff for me. It just drives me nuts. So hopefully they can take care of it, get it done tomorrow. That way we can continue to plug away with our progress. So y'all stay tuned. Midday update for you guys. We're kind of a little bit of a standstill. We're kind of just keep trying to plug away. So let me show you what we got going on over here. So up above their pool, it's actually quite the beautiful view. You walk out of your house, you see the beautiful everything. But enough about the pool, let's look at this deck. So this is a bit of an outdated deck. As you can see here, it's just your traditional wooden deck boards are kind of rough on the feet. So we are going to be putting composite boards down because composite, again, built to last 10, 15, 20 years in the future. You just give it a pressure wash, clean it up a little bit, and it's still perfect. The color's still there. The feeling is still there. You're not gonna get any slivers on your feet. So what we are gonna be doing up here is all these deck boards are coming off. We're actually going to be taking down these railings and putting nice new beautiful railings. We are then going to be wrapping uh, composite on the ceiling as well just to make everything uniform just so it's not exposed and ugly um, and yeah that's what we got the on here so we got over here the man the main man Brandon Gironi always smiling always smiling he's gonna be up here undoing some of these boards popping them out getting it ready for the new deck boards and then in a minute the other main man wherever he's at oh there he is spotted Devo he's gonna be up here with him and yeah 
You guys are gonna get a nice time lapse of that. The boys are gonna do some awesome banging work. So enjoy the show and as always, y'all stay tuned. Good morning, YouTube. Back on site. Today is Friday. I'm gonna show you our traditional morning walkthrough, getting this progress update. Oh, that nice reveal. So, showing you a little bit of progress. We have our retaining wall built over there. Uh, pool's plumbed. We have all of our plumbing lines run up in this trench. This trench is also going to feed an electrical conduit so we can then feed the motor for this automated pool cover. Uh, we got the pool cover guys here. That's Jay. Fantastic gentleman. Does some awesome work as well. Does custom woodworking, some epoxy tables. They are mounting their hardware now, as you can see. They have their encapsulation for the motor and for the reel. That's all getting in. Um, yeah, like I said, it's been a slow past few couple days. We're just kind of waiting around trying to get everything ready with this automated pool cover. But once this hardware is installed, we will be running to the finish line, getting pavers done, coping done, retaining wall done, cabana done, all the above. So yeah, done for that. Um, again, this little last end of the week has been a bit slower, so I apologize for that. But nonetheless, we'll get it done and we'll show you guys the progress. So y'all stay tuned. All right, YouTube, a little bit of a progress update just to kind of explain to you guys what's going on. So, we got these fine gentlemen over here. What's going on with this black piece of plastic, as you could call it, is they're going around stacking it all together, building it to length to fit our pool, and then he's just going around putting these brackets in. That way it's all nice, and it has the same width all the way through. So he's securing that. YouTube so that is some of the progress going on on this pool cover let me just spin it around and show you guys what's been done so we have here our housing for the roller as well as for the fabric the motor side is over there so that's where the motor goes and then that gets electrically connected all the way to our panel which is over there so that was one of the reasons we also had the trench dug here you have our tracks on this side. They're just finishing securing all the hardware on top nice and straight. You have another track on that side. If I come in and show you, you guys can see exactly how the tracks look. So that's where everything gets rolled all the way out to. It also has a nice little vinyl liner hook on it. That way we can actually mount our liner directly on this track and we don't have to worry about that. 
Um, and then that back side is just a little encapsulation to receive everything so that when it's closed, it has where to go. And yeah, that's pretty much update on this one. This is stage one installation done on the automated pool cover. Stage two is when they come back, they drop the fabric, they install the motor and they do all the finishing touches that are everything nice and pretty.